Hello, and thank you for joining us today for another episode of Things to Know Right Now. Today, we are discussing holistic health, specifically massage therapy. And joining us today to explain massage therapy is Linda McDougall of McDougall Consulting. And Linda, you are so terrific at what you do. Welcome aboard, and thank you for being with us today. You're quite welcome, Joe, and a belated happy birthday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So what is massage therapy and does it differ from getting a massage at a spa? Uh, yes and no. It depends on the therapist almost more than anything else. Um, just like anything else, when if you go to a doctor, you can get two or three different opinions. It's the same thing with us. Um, so you go to a spa, but Basically, you go to a spa usually for relaxing massage. So you usually get something like a Swedish. But there are massage um, menus that you can choose from, different types of massage therapy. I just happen to be extremely eclectic in almost anything I do. And one size does not fit all for me ever. <laughs> that is, you know, I am so happy to hear you say that. And you use the word um, relaxation, typically when people go to a, a, a spa yes, um, or when they bring someone into their house, um, whatever, but they, most people think of massage as a relaxation as instead of as a medicinal okay. modality. And so I would like to hear from you why you think that massage therapy is so often mis or overlooked when it comes to medicinal, medicinal modality use? Well, first of all, it's very limitedly understood by just about everybody. Um, lack of education, lack of trying it, <laughs> you yeah. know, lack of, and, and or trying it with somebody who's, you know, may not be any good or fresh out of school. Uh, there's just a number of things that can put somebody off about it if they're not careful and they don't try a few people before they decide on somebody. Um, like anything else, it has to be a relationship. Exactly. Very much so. I mean, you're basically nude with this person or close to it and they're touching you everywhere. So. <laughs> Yes, you want a, a good relationship. You want to feel comfortable with that person. As an and, educator, and you are, I so appreciate the value of your words today and otherwise, because again, massage is so misunderstood, so misused, and so necessary in my mind, and I'm thinking in yours. So how would a, if, how would a person with Parkinson's benefit from massage therapy? All sorts of ways, which is why I focus on disabilities. <laughs> because yeah. they don't, they're not going to go to a spa. Uh, they're not normally going to go to a private practitioner. They're going to need it in their home or in their space. And I've got two Parkinson's clients right now. One of them is in a home and fascinating. He's, he's, he obviously had a brilliant life and his wife goes out, out of the room while we do our thing. And he just talks and talks and talks <laughs> and I get educated on all sorts of things. So it's therapy in many ways, not just massage. Yes. Yeah. It can yeah. be my, it can be therapy on both sides. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. So a couple of the things that we know, and I think you can touch on is um, so circulation, blood circulation would be one, oh, um, yes. the, the circulation of the fluids around the muscles, et cetera, that like everything else kind of gets stuck. Um, so could you address a few of those? Oh, definitely. Uh, def blood is very, very important because it can get stuck in some of those stiff muscles and not move very much. And you've got to get your oxygen in there to the muscles and to the brain and to every part of the body. You've got to get your vitamins, minerals, and all your enzymes and all that. You've got to get all the things that need to be flowing, flowing, and they don't do that so well in a stiff body. So that's one of the things we can do. However, I do want to say 
for Parkinson's and for anything that may have a heart component to it, you don't want the long strokes of Swedish. Now, now Swedish is all sorts of things. It's not just long strokes. So you can have a Swedish massage, but just have it more locally applied, meaning to one part of the body at a time and not long strokes up the body because you can loose a clot if there's one in the calf. So I think what you're suggesting then here maybe is that someone um, be sure to ask their physician about or their their yes their their medical professional whether massage would be okay for them or not. I mean, just get that sign off is not a bad thing, right? Oh, yeah, that's I require that a lot of the time because if somebody has something that's too questionable for me. And if they've had a recent stroke or a recent something or other, then yes, they would come back with a doctor. It's okay that I could work on them. So but the thing is, they may not know that they have that clot. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I. That, we all. I. I don't know that we all understand that, but that is certainly true. Um, so you met. You message. You said you indicated Swedish. There must be a lot of different massage <laughs> types. Are there? Oh, tons. Let me give you a, a rundown of what I took. Okay. <laughs> Swedish, deep tissue, tui na, neuromuscular, reiki, aromatherapy, chair, reflexology, shiatsu, sports. And then on my own, I took uh, myoskeletal and comfort touch. And comfort touch is specifically for people who uh, can't take much touch. Okay. So it's a very gentle, light pressure, because pressure also gets to the muscles and moves things around, but it's so a light one, pressure. One of the things that someone would want to know right now is that perhaps the type of massage that would best fit them would be number one. Um, get going back to the relationship, making sure that they're comfortable with the person and then trying perhaps one or more of these modalities if it if it fits um, the situation and the, um, and, and that's it. You have to know the, the therapist needs to know for sure and tell you why something is appropriate or not appropriate for you, because I won't touch certain people at certain times. I had a, a gentleman call me one time and he wanted me to come over and do a deep tissue. Well, something in my brain as I was talking to him said, nee, I want to see this first. <laughs> uh, so I did take my table over there just in case. And here's this man, well overweight with a big pot belly, and he's on oxygen. And I'm looking at him and you want deep tissue. So I said, I want to see you get down on the table. He got down on the table. He couldn't breathe. I had to bring him back up and I got his wife in there and I said, this man should never have deep tissue. He can't even lie on the table for it. And if you let me go and go look for it again, somebody's going to be fool enough to do it. And then you're both going to be sorry. <laughs> So having a knowledgeable massage therapist is critical. I, you know, for me personally, when I, if I change a massage therapist, the, I look for one who comes into my home, has a questionnaire that they ask me about my condition and before they go forward. So you've just expressed that. Um, I'm guessing that many people probably hear something like deep tissue and then they want that because they don't know what the what the rest of them are that are offered. So your job, as usual, Linda, is to educate, 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 which is what we're trying to do today. But let me ask you, to, I mean, is there something that a person should know about massage, meaning should they bathe beforehand? Should they shower? Should they not eat? Should they eat? Should they drink water? Any of these things, are is that important? Uh, having a massage right after you eat may be uncomfortable for you. It's not going to change anything for me particularly. But for you, it might, because if you eat, eat too much, you're going to have a 
cramped stomach if you're lying on the table. Now, a lot of my clients with Parkinson's, I don't do on a table. My gentleman, I do him in, his, in a lounge chair that will go back. So it, I, don't, I don't use my table a whole lot anymore, even though I have one client I use it for. But my clients are those that are usually done in, in their beds or in a chair now. So over and above this conversation that you and I are having today, um, is would you suggest to someone who hasn't had a massage before of where they might go to find information about what to expect? Well, first of all, I would go to AM, AMTA or ABMP's website. Those are the two associations that are associated with massage therapy. And they will also both at some place in their, in their uh, pages have lists of their graduates and their graduates will then tell you what they specialize in. Now we're gonna put those names on, on, the, uh, on this video so that people can see what you're referring to so that they know how to Google that information. But I think that's so important to, so that someone knows what to look at what to look for and how to prepare for something that I personally believe is so medicinally important that I actually have one once a month because um, that's part of my my um, wellness routine. Well, if you would let me go back to some of the things that massage does because we barely touched on what they what it can do. Okay. It improves balance and gait, which is very important for for Parkinson's. Uh, it, it softens hard muscles and tissues. It produces feelings of caring and comfort. It stimulates the nervous system, and that's a part of Parkinson's for sure. It eases stroke recovery if you've had a stroke as well as Parkinson's. Um, I, I had a lady with stroke, and I would spend my whole, I had only had a half hour a week with her, so it wasn't nearly enough, but I felt like I was Groundhog Day, you know, <laughs> but I would work half an hour just on an arm because it'd be like this and I'd spend half an hour just getting it to relax and release. And then I'd go back and because nobody else was doing anything, it would go right back. But that's just the, what, the story that you need more than half an hour a week. Uh, it eases your flexibility because we're loosening up the muscles a little bit. Um, it helps with sleep. So if you're having problems sleeping, that's a good thing for you. It also helps the immune system. And there was something else. What was the other one? Digestive. Oh, it, well, relieves arthritic pain was what I was gonna say, but Digestion, yeah, because again, it's getting things flowing that are kind of stuck. Yeah. So, and if if you need, I have. If you're constipated, I've I've worked people's abdomens, but make sure you go in the direction of the intestines and not against it, or you'll constipate yourself even more. <laughs> See, I know there's so much to know about massage. We're not going to get to all of it today because we only have a few minutes ourselves. But what we should share is that Linda McDougall is on our website. She does a lot more than massage. But today we wanted to bring massage out to all of you because it is such an overlooked um, treatment for wellness. And we're talking wellness. Not We're not going to cure Parkinson's with this. And we're not going to cure caregiving issues either, but the caregiver is as important in this in this um, this area as well, so that they can release tensions and release and and become relaxed and give themselves respite from their care position and their their care qualities that they're doing for someone else. So this is really for a person in the case of a caregiver. It's different than being a medical modality. Um, so understanding your massage therapist is going to be important. Um, understanding the different massages 
and understanding what Linda McDougall does over and above massage. And you can find that information out by going to our website and going to the Wellness Village on our website, where we talk about some of the other things that Linda does. She is an author. She is a practitioner. She is a well-learned person, and she brings that to our community. And you can find her in, I'm going to say in Kern County. It's, uh, it's No, Ventura. Ventura County. So sorry. Okay. You can find her in Ventura County where she practices massage and other, um, other areas of wellness. Linda, I just want to thank you today for giving us more things to know about right now. Um, this particular interview will be seen on our YouTube channel. When you look at it, when you watch it, we'd like very much that you subscribe and that you like the channel, like us on the channel, and keep coming to know things to know right now, and you'll find such huge, wonderful proponents of wellness as Linda. We can only do that in 15, 20-minute snaps, and so today was our, our knowledge was about massage what it the value of it to a person with Parkinson's, but also the value of it to a Parkinson's caregiver. And so um, we totally appreciate you, your insight, and the work that you do because it, it is super valuable to our community. Linda, can't thank you enough. Thank you. <laughs> so to the rest of you, have a great day, a great evening, great afternoon, whatever it is that you're experiencing. And thank you for watching. Talk to you soon.